So we were discussing in the first hour of the show Health Minister Simon Harris uh, tweeting that his instinct would tell him that uh, spanning children from creches and uh, schools, national schools, uh, who haven't been vaccinated, he'd be, um, his, his, he would be uh, instinctively in favour of that. And then we had our, our three-person panel uh, for the Friday newspapers uh, or the Friday news review uh, in, in general consensus there. Fiona O'Leary is a vaccine activist and founder of Autistic Rights Set uh, Together. Of course, uh, Fiona, you'd be very much in favour of this. There's just something about a ban, Fiona, you know, because I... I'd be a great exponent if we have to treat all our children equally, you know, and of course parents have, some parents choose not to vaccinate their children, but the idea then that that could result in children not getting into creches or worse still not getting into primary school doesn't rest easy with me, to be honest with you. Hi, good morning, good morning, Greg. Yeah, I suppose I've been campaigning for a long time now in this area. I have autistic children and I've been watching the anti-vaccine movement grow steadily in recent years and we're seeing these serious, deadly diseases coming back to our communities, and they are killing children. I mean, I want to make that clear. Uh, Measles is not like a normal cold that you can, you know, recover from very quickly. Uh, Many children end up being disabled from the disease, they can go blind, and some babies mostly sadly die, and there are recorded deaths across Europe uh, from last year. So, you know, measles and mumps are serious diseases, and what I really believe at this point is we have a very good um, programme here in Ireland trying to advise parents to do the right thing and our uptake is not too bad but we're seeing it drop continuously there's a steady decline and I think that we need to take measures to introduce mandatory I mean, the, the decline is it's much greater in Donegal than other areas but what we do it's have bad, we, it's bad in Cork too I mean I live in West Cork can we're 88 percent what are you at well, it varies between 88 and 90, but okay. it's really more... It, the MMR vaccine is very important because there is misinformation still being uh, delivered to people. Well, let me talk to you about that because because there is a... a, 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 a and this is only one theory, but there is a mistrust of... Uh, government, there's a mistrust of the health service, uh, and uh, there's a mistrust of 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 sort of you know big business, etc. And there are people uh, who, uh, and I'm not questioning their motives, but they they can make a living effectively out of tapping into into that. So there is a there is a a. a a, a large part, and these are intelligent people for the most part, a large part of the population that are open to a, an anti-vaccination message that it sort of generally, you know, aligns itself with the views they might have on Big Pharma and government and the HSE, etc. So how do you compel those people uh, to get their children vaccinated? I don't think you can. I mean, this is what I was saying earlier to somebody, that it's almost like these people believe in conspiracy theories, that they're in a cult of sorts. And these same people, this is very important, um, use um, bogus medications on their children. They also believe that, for example, um, they can cure their children, their autistic children, with MMS bleach, a product that I've been fighting to get banned in Ireland, which we have done in recent years. So the anti-vaccine movement isn't just about vaccines. They are anti-government. They are chemtrails in the sky. They're conspiracy theorists in many regards. And I have tried, believe me, over the last six years to talk to parents that believe in this. And it's very hard to educate these people and if you try to give them facts and scientific information they say it's fake news now you can poke fun at these not you but yeah Mm -hmm. you know generic you can poke fun at these and say oh they had a meeting and Mm -hmm. such and such amount of people turned up and 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 all but the reality is that is a growing movement whether it's one person that's channeling it or many Yes, it is. I mean, like, because of America, I think, and, you know, Trump has introduced kind of these, you know, thoughts as well. Um, we're seeing politicians, sadly, um, engaging in this um, falsehood, especially about MMR. And even there's people running as we speak. There's parties here in Ireland forming. Um, one of them is ACI. And on their manifesto, which you can read on their website, they say they want to ban vaccines. And they say that there is this link between autism and the MMR. That is not true. I mean, this has been scientifically proven, Greg countless times and again recently with a very large study of over 600,000 children. Mm. So it's not a belief of mine, just to clarify. These are the facts. Okay. And these parents are listening to quacks and conspiracy theorists. They're listening to... And they're also listening know. to their own experiences, Fiona. Stay there, Pat. Are you... Uh, I mean, you've been through, th- 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 through the mill. Uh, just to, for clarity, would you be pro or anti-vaccination at this point in your life, Pat? Uh, good morning, Greg. I'd be pro. Okay. But you uh, you have yes. experience, though. Yes. Saying that, 
Getting your child the MMR vaccination, there's no guarantee that they're not going to take the measles. Or the mumps. For my child, got the MMR vaccination and took the measles when he was four. And recovered. Had a good life up until he was 22. Uh, the measles virus lay dormant in his brain. And in April 1995, he was diagnosed with subacute cellulose and pancephalitis, given three days to live, and we nursed him for six years. And he died when he was 28. I'm sorry to hear that, Pat. But saying that, I'd still be all for children getting vaccinated. We could have lost him when I took the measles when I was four. Yeah. Okay, so you would actually, even given your experience, you wouldn't say your anti-MMR vaccine, but you you would say that do not believe that your child is 100% protected even if they get it. Is that what you're yep, saying? That's, that's right, yes. All right, Pat. Again, listen, I'm very sorry for your loss. It's heartbreaking stuff. Thanks for coming on, Pat, uh, in, 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 indeed there. Um, I suppose just to make a point about that, and that's a terrible story, and I'm very sorry for his loss as well, but um, herd immunity is really important, Greg, that, you know, when you vaccinate your children, it's really about protecting others as well. And when we have the decline, we don't have herd immunity. Yes, sometimes people can still get these diseases, and children that have compromised immune systems yeah. depend on us to vaccinate our ch- their children because they can't get the vaccine. So the, the, can I say, the child, can know, I make an observation, them. Fiona? And, yeah. and I think, you know, you've done fantastic work over the years. I don't I don't know you personally, but I know that you, yeah. you have, and I know you spoke publicly. Yeah. My concern is this, and I'm saying this as a parent, uh-huh. that people seem to be taking ownership of this issue, uh, that being pro-vaccination and anti-vaccination is getting very personal. It's getting very political. It's getting very jeering uh, of of one another. That is the most regrettable thing that I'm seeing in this country at this moment, that uh, you know, it's being pitched on political grounds, it's being pitched on general feelings about globalism and every every other mm-hmm. thing. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I say this absolute respect for you, you're part of that as well. I mean, do you not yourself want to step back from that so that, you know, pe- parents are educating themselves in this non-personal, non-political space? Well, firstly, um, my experience with the anti-vaccine movement has been one of, of horror. You know, they mm. are very personal. They dox you, they target you. I've had death threats from people that are linked to this movement. So as a pro-science um, activist, we don't engage in that kind of behaviour, just to clarify. No, I'm not and, suggesting um, you do either. But, but I, I do think that political is important because, especially when we see parties like this party, Anti-Corruption Ireland, who want to ban vaccines, this is their wording, we have to be political about it because if we're not, we're going to see more death okay. and that's what we don't want. And I think, you know, children, this is very important, Parents do not own their children. They have their own rights. And the babies that die from these diseases didn't sign up for death. They didn't make that choice. So, you know, I think that I am caring about the child here and not the parent that's being misled by conspiracy theorists on the internet. And that's what's happening here. Facebook are promoting these people. They are allowing platforms for quacks and misinformation. And it's not just about vaccines. Some of these parents are giving dangerous products to their children. And... To me, that is a form of um, endangerment. Okay, I'll take your point. Listen, I just wanted to ask the question to get it out there. Mm-hmm. Because people yeah. feel that, you know, that there's two, there's just two two pitches and, 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 and you know, and there's a lot of us in the middle and neither tend to feel like they're speaking to us or for us either as well. Do you know, do you get where I'm coming but, from? But, but, but how do we, I mean, what would you I don't know. I don't know. Alternative? Because, like, I don't know. That, it, to me, like, I've said before, we have tried to engage, I suppose, with mm. this movement, and they don't want to know. They don't trust what we're saying. Okay. They don't trust the specialists in this area. So what, what do you do when someone is in that conspiracy bubble, Greg? You have to think of the child, and that's what okay. we're doing here. We're and that's the answer the to the question, Fiona, and I, yeah. and I appreciate you coming Perfect. on. Yeah. All right, then. All right, Fiona, thank, thank you. you. That's Fiona O'Leary there, vaccine activist and founder of Autistic Rights uh, Together.